Mr. Beaton, you've been described as an author, a designer, a painter, a photographer. Now, which of these is your main profession? I wish I knew. I'm afraid that's been my trouble for a very long time. It's always Beaton's look, Beaton's touch. The fashion work, the portraiture, the film and theater work. He captures Hollywood and American elegance like no one. If he hadn't have done photography, if he'd just done My Fair Lady, that would have been enough for me. No one has had the ability to wave the wand and scatter the magic over somebody like Cecil Beaton. It was up to me to find the sort of world that I wanted. His life was a stage. What a marvelous thing great physical beauty is. It's nothing less than a living miracle. Everything about him was style. All those details of a kind of dandy. I knew he was an old queen. Am I vain? Cecil had an aura about him that really drew you in, but he looked totally unlike anybody else. Beaton was essentially an outsider, striving to get in. There is scarcely a flattering self-portrait, yet truth begins with oneself. I think that probably love, or the lack of love, was an enormous part of his life. There was a self-destructive thing there, in terms of relationships. Oh yes, I can hate. I, I can hate unreasonably. He loves. It's very easy for him and to he love. he positively loves you, or he positively hates you. He was just a sort of mass of contradictions. None of the things he did really satisfied him. He was on this endless quest for something. I wish that I were able to dig down deeper. He gave over his life to expressing beauty, however he could do it. Once you've started for the end of the rainbow, you can't very well turn back. What if one is a dreamer?